I've got a question for you. Who's the person you're being? Are you satisfied? It's okay. This is a judge-free zone, and it's exactly why I started the show. Welcome to Be The Person, a podcast for the brave and the curious who are ready to explore who they are fully created to be. I'm your host, Annie Randall, the adventurous one leading this investigative journey of transformation. By delving into topics and asking unexpected questions, we will discover the keys for unlocking our true potential and being our best selves today. You may be surprised by what you find when you let go of fear in order to discover the answers of becoming the person you were made to be. Thanks for joining Be The Person podcast. I'm excited to talk to you today about a topic that I really love, and it's intermittent fasting. We're going to talk all of the things intermittent fasting, like why would you do it? What are the benefits? How would you do it? What can you eat? How long should you fast? Tips if you're doing it, all of the things. So I'm super excited to share that information with you today. This started a few years ago for me. When I was helping members, I owned three Orange Theory Fitnesses and looking to see, you know, if they were exercising, eating what we thought was a great diet, why weren't they losing weight? And so intermittent fasting is one of the tools that you can use to potentially lose weight. There's a lot of other benefits too, but it really, for me, started down the rabbit hole of research. And I ended up getting certified in holistic nutrition. I've always been certified as a coach, even though I don't use that right now. I'm more on the business side, but for my own um, information and for this podcast, I did a ton of research on intermittent fasting and have over the years, I've tested several things on myself and I'm super excited to share that with you today. So with that, let's jump in and just get started. You may look at intermittent fasting and be intimidated by it or think, I can't not eat for 16 hours and you don't have to. There's a lot of different ways to do intermittent fasting. There's a few resources that I really love and would highly recommend. I'm going to put these in the show notes as well. But one is a book. um, If you're watching, I'm going to show it to you. It's the Complete Guide to Intermittent Fasting. And it's by Dr. Jason Fung. He does a lot on intermittent fasting. He has a great YouTube channel. He's a really good researcher. That is a key resource. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into all of the science behind not only fasting, but also weight loss, The Obesity Code is one of my favorite books, also from um, Dr. Fung. So those are two of the references. And when I refer to studies today, that's where the studies are going to come from. So let's jump in and say, why would you want to do intermittent fasting? Because I think people only think about weight loss. And again, it can be a tool for weight loss. And it can be a great tool for weight loss. But it can also be a tool to make you more metabolic flexible so your body can go from burning carbs to protein to fat it helps with that and the last thing is it can be a really good tool um, for autophagy and getting rid of autophagy is just getting rid of the cells that are the weakest in your body and I will tell you I used it for several months after this I still will use it for this reason because I do have inflammation in my body from some surgeries. So for autophagy to get rid of the weaker cells, it can be a really good tool. So those are kind of the big bucket. Why would I want to use it? And now before we jump into all of the hows and that kind of thing, I really want to talk to you about the hormone insulin because it makes a big difference. And I think if you understand this, then it will help you understand all of the rest. Because once this clicked for me, I understood why would I want to do fasting versus dieting? Why, when people diet, do they typically not lose weight and keep it off? 
And I really think it has to do with insulin. So insulin is a hormone in our body and its main job is kind of the gatekeeper to the cell to let glucose in. So I think of it, my mind works in pictures and I'm trying to make science super simple. So I think of the cell and then I think of a key and it unlocks it and opens the door and glucose can go in. And we get glucose from our foods. And so what happens is uh, insulin's main job is to let glucose in. So when we eat food, it turns to glucose and it can enter our cell and we use that for energy. Now, if there's too much and we can't store it all in the cell, then glucose or insulin helps us store the extra in the form of energy. And after it goes into our cells and they're full, it then goes to our liver. And when our liver is full, it then goes to our fat cells. And that's going to be important because we have to use all of the insulin in our cells and then in our liver in order to access this the stored fat in our cells. And really, again, I'm a picture person. I think of a refrigerator freezer example. This helps me in my mind. And your cells are really all of the food in your refrigerator. And you have to eat all of that first before you can access the food in your freezer, which is gonna be the um, energy stored in your liver and then also in your fat cells. So we like it so we could just access right away our fat cells and burn fat, but that's not how it works. It has to go in that order. And that really helps us from a timing perspective when we think, why would I fast versus just go on a diet? So let's compare the two and what happens in the body. Because again, fasting is going to get rid of all of the refrigerator food and tap into the freezer food, which is your fat cells. What happens inside of your body when you do that you have something called a metabolic rate. This was, if I laid in bed all day, how many calories would my body burn? So we all have a metabolic rate. If you've ever done an in-body at Orange Theory or been on an in-body machine anywhere else, it prints you out your metabolic rate. So it's typically between 1,000 and 2,000 calories. Depends on if you're a male or a female, how much muscle you have, how old you are, all of those things play into metabolic rate. So what happens when we fast is our metabolic rate doesn't change. And actually, if we go into a true fast, your metabolic rate goes up. So it doesn't decrease. Now, the exact opposite happens when you diet. So let's say you cut your calories from 2,000 calories to 1500 calories and you do that over time your body is very smart and what happens is it just adjusts your metabolic rate down so let's say prior it was 1600 calories it may adjust it down to 1450 calories so it wants to um, lower that metabolic rate for the food that you're taking in and that's a key point because I'm guessing if you're listening, you may have hit a plateau at some point on a diet and you're thinking, well, why isn't it working? I'm eating the same, maybe even less, and it's not, I'm not getting the same results. And it's because your metabolic rate has gone down. The other thing that happens when we diet versus uh, fast, and I'm taking the dieting side first, is your growth hormone, which helps you maintain muscle goes down when you diet. And that's a big thing because we do not want to lose muscle. That's a big thing, especially as we age. It helps us with longevity, but it also is a key player in metabolic rate. And it's a big player. I'll give you a personal example here. Um, I tore my hamstring earlier this year. And in January, I had gotten on the in-body machine I had my metabolic rate was 1,350 calories. 
or 1,350 calories, excuse me. Um, I couldn't exercise or do anything for three months. I got on the in body after that. I lost two pounds of muscle during that time. Not surprising. I wasn't able to do much. But what it did to my metabolic rate was it dropped at 50 calories per day. And that might not seem like a big thing, but it is. Because if you if I ate the exact same thing over a year, I would gain five pounds. So that's a big deal if your metabolic rate changes. And it's a really big deal if you lose muscle. So our goal, if uh, we're interested in losing weight, we want to go for fat loss, not muscle loss. And one of the key players is growth hormone. So during intermittent fasting, that wasn't the case. The other thing that plays in is insulin. And our insulin significantly goes down when you intermittent fast. And again, that makes sense because we know in the cells, it's using up all of that in our cells, and then it's going to those stored insulin levels in the form of fat. Now, if I go on a diet, and I've seen this with so many people of, yes, it might work in the short term, but again, you're going to end up losing muscle and plateauing. And for for a while, everybody may need to go on a diet. You know, that might not be the worst thing. I'm just giving you benefits for fasting versus dieting and kind of comparing the two so you can make a decision what's best for you right now. Because right now, it might be one answer. In six months, it could be a different answer. So your metabolic rate does change when you diet and it will go down. Your body is smart and it will adjust. Your insulin level typically doesn't change there. And your growth hormone does. It actually goes down significantly. And that's why we end up losing muscle when we diet. So there's some big differences there between dieting and intermittent fasting, which definitely lean toward the intermittent fasting route. So what does the research show? Um, on average, people do lose weight on intermittent fasting, whether it's your goal or not. And it's specifically because we end up eating typically less calories. If you intermittent fast, and it depends on how long, typically you eat about 20% less calories. Now, it will depend on how long you fast and how you decide to do that. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But you do lose weight typically if you um, intermittent fast. One of the places I love to order from is Thrive Market. They have healthy snacks and staples. They offer free shipping for all orders over $49. I have found a lot of their products to be cheaper. They have great sales. It is my go-to place for healthy foods. I put a link in the show notes for $40 off your first order. So let's get a little bit into the how. How do I do it and what does that look like? And this is where I think it can be confusing, but I think it really goes back to what works for you and how do you feel because I can give you the research to show, you know, this might work or that might work. But if you feel terrible and it doesn't fit your lifestyle, it's not going to work for you. So I think first off, the standard for everybody, whether you're trying or not, should be 12 hours. We need to give our bodies a break to metabolize all of the food. The average American eats a 15 hour eating window. We need to cut that back 12 hours. That should be our goal. And then I also want you to think about eating in between meals. If, if we look at the research from the 70s, we ate three meals a day, maybe one afternoon snack. And now a lot of times we eat all day long and really into the night for that 15 hour window. And that's not good for our health. It keeps our insulin levels spiked all day long into the night. And so, of course, our body's never able to burn fat 
because we're always feeding it. And you may have heard, oh, you need to, to eat to keep your metabolism up. That's not what research has found. We want our insulin spike to go up and then come back down and be at a stable rate. It may go up again when you eat and come back down, but you don't want it elevated all day long. It's not good for your body. So our baseline is going to be 12 hours because I don't know if you're like me, but the snacks I pick after dinner are typically not just vegetables or fruits or, you know, things that are really good for you. It's typically ice cream or junk food. If you're sitting on the couch, that's what we need to get away from. So eat dinner, give your body a break till breakfast and see how that feels for you. But our minimum goal, 12 hours, and then three to four hours in between meals. You may want to plan for an afternoon snack, or if you really eat early and then want to push out dinner, you may plan for a snack. But again, if you're like me and I work from home a lot, I can snack all day long. And that's what we're trying to get away from. So 12 hours and then three to four hours between meals. Another really popular plan is the 16-8. So you're not going to eat for 16 hours. And then your feeding window or when you're going to eat is eight hours. That works great for a lot of people. It's not terribly hard if you end at, let's see, six o'clock at night. And we think, okay, 16 hours. How long is that? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That would give us six hours. And so we'd have to go till 12 the next day. So 12 o'clock at lunch to six o'clock dinner would be our feeding. Another popular plan is the 16-8. So you would eat for eight hours and not eat for 16 hours. It's not terribly difficult. If you go eat dinner at six o'clock, you wouldn't eat again and then till 10 o'clock the next morning. So that one's pretty popular. For me, typically, that's a little bit too long. It Not always, but it can feel like that. 14, I have found, is kind of my perfect window. And I would encourage you to play around with that. When do you feel the best? And when you start, if your body's used to eating for 15 hours, it's going to want to eat for that long. So you may have to adjust in small increments until your body gets used to this. But I would say, then just see, how does your body feel? I know other people that do 20 to four. That one gets a little tricky because I think we need to keep our protein high. I always like to get one gram of protein per ideal body weight. So if you weigh 115 pounds, the ideal grams of protein is 150 pounds or 150 grams. That's hard to do in four hours. So I think just keeping the balance of protein to how long you're eating. So that's one option. Another option might be a little bit longer fast. And I like this on occasion, probably do it once a month, or I'm just going to pick one day and I'm not going to eat for that day. And it may, you may think it's harder than it is, but it's just not eating dinner. You stop eating after dinner, let's say on Monday, and then you go and you don't eat until dinner on Tuesday, 24 hour fast. That's one option. Another might be a 36 hour fast. So you would do that same thing, dinner on Monday, you wouldn't eat at all on Tuesday, not till breakfast on Wednesday. So it might be something that you work into. But again, when we were talking about getting rid of your weaker cells, the autophagy, this can be a great way to do that. Overall makes your body stronger. There's also a 5-2 method. So five days, you're going to eat normal. Maybe Monday, Tuesday, you eat normal. Wednesday, you do, um, typically it's 500 calories for women, 600 for men. And I would say it's really important to think about what those calories are made up of, protein and some sort of like fruit or veggie. So they're really clean. And you're going to do that for two days a week. So again, Monday, Tuesday, normal, 
let's say Wednesday, you do the 500 calories. Thursday, you do normal. Friday, you do 500 calories and then go on the weekend. You can set it up however it works for your week, but that could just be an option that works well for some people. You can also do longer fasts. Again, you might wanna work into these. You might wanna get supervision by your doctor, but you can go a lot longer without food, three, four days. There's some really great information in the fasting guide, but those are just some different options on timing. And again, I would say, look and see what works best for you. Again, for me personally, typically I'll do uh, 14 hours fasted during the night. And then I'll just do one day, once a month, either 24 or 36 hour fast. And I know that because I've messed around with it for the last couple of years. And that's what feels right to my body. Another big question is, can you work out fasted? And I will tell you, I've always worked out fasted. I feel better that way. There's research that goes both ways, to work out fasted and to not work out fasted. Honestly, I think it comes down to personal preference. So if there's days that you're a 5 a.m. person and you're gonna work out and you absolutely need to eat before, that's not gonna be one of your fasted days. That's okay. I would say just plan. You don't have to do the same plan every day either. You don't have to do a 16-8 fast every single day. If you work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you need to eat before you work out, just plan for that. That's okay. Tuesday, Thursday, maybe are your days you wait to eat till a little bit later. See how your body feels. But what does it mean? What can you have during a fast? Um, I think most people would all agree you can definitely have water and I would encourage a large amount of water when you're fasting. You can do black coffee and typically green tea, green or black tea um, with nothing in it. Now, again, remember insulin is what we're trying to bring down. So if you do a little bit longer fast or as you get used to it, some things in the fasting guide that they say don't break a fast are going to be things like MCT oil, butter, um, different other different kinds of oil, heavy cream, but things that are going to break a fast because those are all made of fats and fat typically does not raise your insulin. What does raise your insulin, though, is any of your artificial sweeteners. If you have milk, regular creamer, that is going to break a fast. And it's a little bit different thinking because if you use, sometimes I'll use MCT oil in my coffee. I'll blend it because it'll help me go longer. MCT oil is one of those things that makes you feel fuller. And so in the morning, I'll make coffee. Put in a couple ice cubes, put in my coffee, and then put in maybe a tablespoon of MCT oil, blend it, and then I just drink it. You could reheat it, but I drink it typically just kind of lukewarm. And that works great for me. But you have to remember, fats don't change your insulin level, but carbs and protein do. So that's where, and even your artificial sweeteners, even if they have zero calories, they will spike your insulin. So make sure if you're drinking anything other than coffee, tea, or water, you really think about it's 100% fat is kind of what you're going for. And you can get more information in the fasted guide. There's two other quick things I want to talk to you about that are super important is one, how to break a fast. And typically, I will do this with a protein and maybe a simple fruit or a vegetable, but really clean is how you want to do it. And they did a study of, there were two categories. They gave people either 1,000 calories of extra fructose, like high fructose corn syrup, or just glucose, things like fruit or just plain sugar. 
your high fructose um, people over seven days, their insulin levels got 25% worse. So if you're looking to do this, especially for weight loss, you have to pay attention to high fructose corn syrup. And if you look at your packaged fruit, it's or excuse me, if you look at your packaged foods, it's in almost everything. Ketchup was one of the things that threw me off. Heinz ketchup, it's kind of a thing in our family because I won't buy it because the second ingredient in there is high fructose corn syrup. And it's a big deal because over seven days, just a thousand calories of it, your insulin levels got 25% worse. So I would say how you break a fast, that you do it really clean, and two, that you pay attention to high fructose corn syrup. The other one is cortisol. It's another hormone in your body and it regulates stress. But if, it, if it's short-term stress, like you work out or, you know, we all get stressed out, let's say for a meeting, but the meeting ends and the stress level goes down, that's okay. Our body is designed to handle, handle that. Cortisol goes up in the morning because it wakes us up. It gets us going for the day. And then as nightfall comes, it's supposed to go down as we go to sleep. But what happens today in our society is we live under chronic stress. And if this happens, what happens to insulin is really important because if your cortisol levels are high and they stay high all day long into the night because of chronic stress in your body, your insulin level will not go down. So you need to look to at your overall stress. How do you manage that? How do you um, have periods where you're not stressed out because it's really important for your body? And I know that's a little side note from intermittent fasting, but I just thought it was really key when we're looking at all of these hormones and things going on inside our body, what, that that one is really important. And we've seen it over and over again when I've worked with people. Um, if we don't adjust their stress levels, no matter what we do on the exercise and food, it, their body holds on to that weight because their insulin levels never go down. I'm also going to link this if you want more information, diagrams. I did a presentation in January. It's called Fuel Your Body for You. And it's on YouTube. I'm going to link there. There's a lot of different graphs. It's similar information, but a little more in depth. So if you'd like to go there, I would just encourage you to use that resource. Also, the fasting guide that I talked about at the beginning is a fantastic resource. And so is Dr. Jason Spung's YouTube channel can also be super helpful. So I would just encourage you. Give fasting a try. If it's something you believe that could help you, play around with what feels good for your body. And then at minimum, I would challenge you to do a 12-hour eating window and not eat for at least 12 hours per day. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to share it, that would be wonderful. If you know somebody that you think would be, that would benefit from this, and always, it would mean the world to me if you gave our show a five-star review. Thank you so much.